Okay, let's talk about inverse functions. And if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're definitely gonna to have to understand functions and you're gonna to have to understand a lot about inverse functions. So what I'm gonna to try to do here is give you a quick power uh, review or a little crash course. And let's see if we can keep it around 10 minutes. So if you don't really know much about inverse functions, you're gonna walk away from this video knowing a lot. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I'm telling you right now, all students can be successful in mathematics. That's really what uh, my experience has told me, but it requires two things. One, you gotta be willing to do the work. So if you're struggling in math, uh, don't give up, okay? Keep working hard. The second thing you need is great math instruction, clear and understandable math instruction. So that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. By the way, if you happen to be preparing for a test like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, anything with a math section, I can help you out. I also offer full homeschool math courses. And if this uh, video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe because that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into inverse functions. So I'm gonna assume that you know something already about functions, okay? And um, we're gonna start off by just looking at the characteristics of how a function and its inverse kind of like behave. So here is a function, and this function right here, this little notation, this little negative one right there, is stating that this is the inverse function of this function. So this is f of x, this is the inverse function of that function there. Now here's the deal, this, if we just thought of this as a function, this function over here is the inverse of this function. Okay, so a function and its inverse is the same thing as the, uh, the inverse function having its function over here. So hopefully that's not too confusing. But uh, here is how you know uh, that you have an act, that you actually have an inverse function. Now I'm gonna get into how to find the inverse function, all that good stuff. Just uh, Let's just kind of first get a general idea of what the, a function and an inverse function do. Now, if you take a composite function Let's take this f of x function here, and let's plug in the inverse function right there. Okay, so in other words, we're gonna plug all this stuff in there. That's that's what this notation is saying. So if you don't understand function operations, especially composite functions, which is kind of a confusing thing for a lot of algebra students, uh, let me give you a couple suggestions. One, I got tons of videos on this stuff on my YouTube channel, um, and then also you may wanna check out like my full algebra course. But let's go ahead and plug in the inverse function into this function. So with, I'm gonna replace this x with the inverse function. This is finding the composite function, right? So we're plugging in the inverse into this function. So you can see here this setup. Now, when I simplify this, I'm gonna get two times one half x plus one half. I'm gonna get x plus one here minus one. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. But uh, really this simplifies down to just x, okay? Now, let's go ahead and plug the function into the inverse function. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna plug in this function right here into this inverse function. And when I do that, you can kind of just see all this math here. Uh, we also end up with x, okay? So basically a function and an inverse kind of undo one another and you'll end up with x. This is basically the definition of a function inverse that uh, basically both composite functions here uh, end up as equal, um, they end up equaling to x, okay? But you can kind of think of, again, a function and its inverse is kind of undoing one another. All right, let's take a look at a function and a inverse function this way, okay? So hopefully you're familiar with a mapping diagram. If you're not, you definitely need to uh, be familiar with this, but let's focus on this here this could be a, a simple mapping uh, diagram of a function. There's a lot of ways we can express functions. And uh, this right here is uh, basically stating this function here. One is pointing to seven. So that represents the point one seven. Two is pointing to eight. That's the point two eight. And then three is pointing to nine. That's the point three nine. So this set of points collectively is a function because uh, when we map it out here, we don't have any x trying to point to one and um, uh, two or more y's, okay? So that's the definition of a function. Every x uh, um, 
it points to one and only one y. So if you don't really understand the definition of a function, again, I have tons of videos on this. If you really want to master this stuff, check out any one of my algebra courses from pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, and then my most advanced stuff would be in pre-calculus. But anyways, let's take, go back to uh, this function here. So the domain is the set of all of our input values, and it's uh, associated with the variable x. This is our uh, independent variable, and y is the, uh, the dependent variable. And this right here, all these values, is our range. Okay, so you should know this. This is the domain. This is the range of this function. Now let's take a look at the inverse function. So this function here, let's take a look at its inverse. Okay, so this would be the inverse function. Now let's look at the domain and range. Notice here that the range of the function is now the domain of the inverse function, and the domain of the function is now the range of the inverse function. Okay, so anyways, these are things that you need to know, all right? When you have a function and its inverse, the domain and range switch around. Okay, so hopefully I can keep this lesson around 10 minutes. I'll probably go a little bit over, but it'll be worth your time as you're going to learn a lot about inverse functions. Okay, so let's uh, talk about another characteristics of functions and their inverse, and that is this. Um, if you were to graph a function and its inverse, assuming that function has an inverse, and I'm gonna get into that here in a second, the graphs would be symmetric along the y equals x line. So here is the y equals x line. If you don't know how to graph lines, well, you need to go ahead, back and review how to do that. But uh, here is the y equals x line. So let's suppose this yellow line represents the graph of a function, okay? And its inverse would be this blue line, okay? But if I was to graph the inverse and the function, they would be symmetric, i.e. They, they would form a mirror image over this line, okay? This will always be the case. Uh, between a function and its inverse, right? When you graph them, uh, they will the graphs of the function and the inverse will be symmetric again across this y equals x line. These are things that your uh, teacher is going to expect you to know. Okay, so let's move on and talk about how to find uh, an inverse function. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, not all functions have inverses. So some of you might be saying, wow, what is uh, this guy talking about? Not all functions have inverses. Well, how do you know? Well, I'm going to tell you that here in a second. But let's go ahead and assume that a particular function that you're given uh, does have an inverse. So how do you go about doing that? Well, this is the steps you need to follow. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to understand when you have f of x, this function notation, f of x is always equal to y. Okay, so I can replace this f of x with a y, and you need to do that uh, because our first step to find the inverse function is the following. So here's your y, here's your x. What you're going to do is replace the x with the y and the y with the x. So right here, I'm going to put a y, and then right here, I'm going to put an x. So the first step is, after you write your function with a y, you're going to re um flip-flop the y and the x right there, okay? Now, at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to solve for y, okay? When you do that, you will actually uh, will have found the inverse function. So let's go ahead and uh, finish this particular problem up. So we have x is equal to 2y minus 1. So the left is equal to the right. The right is equal to the left. So I'm going to put this 2y minus 1 is equal to x. This is uh, perfectly fine to do this. The reason why I'm doing that is because I like to solve for my variable uh, on the left-hand side of the equation. So let's go ahead and solve for y. So my first step will uh, be I'm going to add 1 to both sides of the equation, and it with uh, uh, 2y is equal to x plus 1, and then I'm going to divide everything by 2. Okay. So here, your final answer could look like this, x plus 1 over 2, but I'm going to suggest that you write it this way. Just put this 2, this denominator over this and over this, so you'll end up with 1 half uh, x or x over 2 plus 1 half, okay? So this is equivalent to this, and there you go, okay? This right here is, in fact, the inverse function, and uh, because we uh, solved, okay, or because we had the function f, f of x, and it's inverse right down here, you're going to use this notation, this f negative 1 
of x, okay? And this is basically the same functions. Let me go way back up here that um, I was showing here with the composite, right? So we just found that function inverse. It is this function. And when we plugged in the composite functions of one another, we both got x. That's how you can always check if, in fact, you have the correct uh, inverse function. Again, your teacher will require you to do this if you have a good, you know, strong math teacher, someone that's really teaching you rigorous algebra. If you're not doing any of this, you're like, yeah, we don't do this in our class. Well, guess what? You're 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 going to have gaps in your in your algebra education. You, you might want to check out my full course so you don't miss anything important. Okay, so let's talk about finally why some functions do not have an an inverse. So here's the deal, right? Uh, when you're talking about functions, remember, you first start learning about relations, okay? Now, some relations are functions, okay? This is a review of stuff that you should know. And some functions have an inverse. Not all functions have an inverse, but uh, how do we know that? Well, basically, the type of functions that have an inverse, okay, are what we call one, I'll write it over here, one-to-one -one functions, one-to-one -one functions. So this is really, really important. And let's go ahead and uh, learn about one-to-one -one functions. Now, what you're gonna need to understand here is uh, two tests, the VLT and the HLT, okay? And that's not to be confused with the BLT, which is bacon, lettuce, and tomato. tomatoes. And see, I'll write this stuff down, I get hungry. Anyways, VLT and HLT, so, Let's just quickly review the VLT, okay? This is the vertical line test. This is the test to determine whether a graph represents a function. So how does that work? Well, if I draw a vertical line anywhere through a graph and it only chops through that graph one time, okay? Like right here, anywhere along this graph, it only intersects that graph once. Well, that indicates that uh, you are dealing with a function, okay? So in both of these examples, uh, right here, let me just erase this, uh, these graphs um, are functions, okay, because they pass the VLT. All right, so this is a graphical test that you want to know. So now let's talk about the HLT. What is the HLT? So this is called the vertical line test, right? I just drew vertical lines. So you might be saying, well, HLT is at the horizontal line test? Yes, indeed. And this is the test to uh, see if you have a one-to-one -one function. All right, now... Let's go ahead and see how this works. So uh, it works exactly like the vertical line test. You just draw a, ver a horizontal line uh, through the graph. It just only chops through one time. Uh, it passes. So this graph right here, this line, is a one-to-one -one function, meaning that it has an inverse. All right? So this right here could be like that y equals 2x plus 1. Um, of course, I could write this as a function, f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. I can find the inverse, and as a matter of fact, we kind of just did that in those uh, previous problem. Now, let's take a look at this uh, situation. So, this again is a function. It passed the vertical line test, but what's going on here? Well, the horizontal line is chopping through the graph uh, two times. So, if you have a graph and you draw a horizontal line and it can uh, intersect more than once, it fails the HLT, meaning this is not a one-to-one -one function, meaning that you cannot find an inverse. So if you have a graph, let's, let's say like y equals x squared, actually let me uh, write this as a, a, a function, f of x, maybe something like x squared minus 2, all right? If I was to give you this function, this is a function, and you attempted to find the inverse function, you would have a problem doing that, okay? All right, so there you go. I don't know if uh, it's been 10 minutes. I don't really pay attention. You know, I just try to come up with these snappy titles. But here's the deal. What I do know is that if you follow through and watch all my videos, you're going to definitely learn something about what I'm talking about. And hopefully, we just upgraded your knowledge about inverse functions. Again, super important to know in algebra. And if you have um, any more questions about functions, uh, please take advantage of all the videos on my YouTube channel. I have over 1,000 plus uh, videos on my channel, ton of videos on functions, what they are, inverse function examples, but I really, really uh, teach this heavy duty in my um, algebra courses, okay? All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.